So, we've been uh, commissioned this um, task, this tender, and our aim here is to identify a sustainable model, and when we're talking about a sustainable model, we focus on economic and financial sustainability. Okay, so the aim of uh, gathering together this team is uh, to identify a sustainable model that is methodologically consistent to what an economist would call a sensible way to manage uh, an infrastructure, okay? Our team consists of economists and econometricians, archive specialists, accountants, and a lawyer, institutional analysis, uh, 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 an analyst that uh, gives us um, the consistency of our method and at the end of the day, our proposals with the existing legal framework. Uh, so that we can talk to the other team who is, who is analyzing the legal uh, framework. Okay, now the two main objectives is to achieve an accurate estimation of the benefits and the costs of this infrastructure. And based on these benefits and costs, and when we are talking in economics about benefits and costs, we are talking about how much it costs to build the infrastructure, to run the infrastructure, and the benefits of any users. And the users could be individuals, could be organizations, could be institutions, any relevant stakeholder. And based on this benefit and st uh, cost structure, which is, uh, you should think about it as time series of benefits and costs, because this sustainable model Sustainable means that it can live for many periods of time. So we need the dynamic benefits, the time series of benefits, the time series of costs that can support uh, this infrastructure in a sustainable way. So how are we going to do it? Identify the stakeholders and measure in monetary terms the benefits they derive from using the infrastructure. We're going to identify the cost of in, uh, building the infrastructure, operating, maintaining the infrastructure, and then we're going to put this together in a dynamic and cross-sectional way because it will be different for different stakeholders and different repositories, compare the two, and see if the cost a lower, higher, equal abundant benefit compared to the benefits. And we are going to do this over time. And once we identify whether it is uh, something that is so increasing social welfare, that the social benefits, the benefits <coughs> of the involved stakeholders are higher than the cost of sustaining, of building, sustaining, and investing the infrastructure, then we're going to identify who is willing to pay, for what services, how much, what is a sustainable pricing and business model for this uh, infrastructure. We have the following deliverables. We've constructed the methodology, and it's already uploaded in the wiki. And I will try to show it, to show the whole methodology in one slide. We have done the stakeholders analysis, and the person who leads the stakeholders analysis is Oya from Cornell University. Oya. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Oya. Uh, Oh yeah, Rieger. Rieger, yes, my, excuse my pronunciation. We have um, started working on the cost analysis. 
I will introduce the explicit method, which is a survey based method that then uses the survey results, uh, analyzes the results using econometric analysis in order to identify the stakeholders' valuation of the services of, uh, of this infrastructure. And we're talking about monetary valuation. And then we're going to do the cost-benefit analysis. And based on the cost-benefit analysis, we, 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 we will be able to identify how much the, the infrastructure and services cost, who values the infrastructure and services, how much they are willing to pay, what are the revenues, what are the costs over time. And based on this, we define a sustainable business model. Unless you do all this, you cannot really identify a sustainable business model. And because I knew that I don't have, I wouldn't have time to guide you through my 40 uh, slides, I tried to put everything in one slide. Let's try to make sense of this. Okay, we have the open air infrastructure, open air plus. And we have it because somebody believes that it creates benefits to stakeholders, but it, it also costs something. Who are the stakeholders? The, this question will be answered through the stakeholder database that we've created, through the stakeholders mapping and prioritization, <coughs> an analysis that we already conducted, Based on the results of the mapping, we are going to uh, introduce a sample selection method. Sample selection for what? To identify the sample that we will apply the stakeholders questionnaire, which is a questionnaire that we've put together in order to identify the services that the stakeholders identified in our database value in order to understand what the different stakeholders get from open air infrastructure. And then, in order to identify how much different stakeholders are willing to pay for different services, we're gonna use the so-called choice experiment methodology, which is an econometric methodology that allows you to derive willingness to pay for specific stakeholders for specific services. In principle, in economics, if you don't have any diversions from the perfect market, this should be equal to the margin of willingness to pay should be equal to price. But leave this aside for now. On the other side, you have the costs. You have investments, operation and maintenance, which more or less summarize the different costs that are involved. This uh, cost identification and estimated figures for different uh, aspects of, uh, of the infrastructure of operating and sustaining the infrastructure will be derived from the cost question we've put together. And then when we have the benefits and the cost, we will then try to identify different sources of revenues. These are examples. EU grants, institutional contributions, mainly up to now, they subsidize in initial investment. They give the initial investment. But there are other potential, other potential revenues, like revenues from providing access to articles, from subscriptions, from contributions, discovery services, research funders, and so on. And at the end of the day, we need a financial net present value that is bigger than zero. These are the revenues and costs in each period of time discounted by I, which is the interest rate, that is the opportunity cost of capital, the fact that you decided to invest in this form of capital and not in some other. So this should give you, if your project is sustainable, 
uh, a value that is uh, higher than zero. If it's not, and you, your revenues are not enough to cover your cost, but you seem to get a value of the services that is the benefits here are higher than the cost, but revenues are not higher than the cost, then the cost-benefit analysis will identify the most efficient solutions for subsidizing this infrastructure from EU grants and institutional contributions. And based on these results, and only if you do, or if you go through each and every step of this methodology, you can identify pricing and financial schemes and the relevant business model for sustaining any infrastructure. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, um, uh, uh, science infrastructure, it can be any infrastructure. Our project results are all available on the project wiki. Okay, so uh, you can go there and you can find uh, clicking a sustainability group. You can find the proposal, minutes of meetings, the bibliography, the presentations, and then the stakeholders' database, the stakeholders' description, results from stakeholders' analysis, the stakeholders' questionnaire that will give you, uh, identify the most uh, important services for the stakeholders, and also the cost questionnaire. Moreover, um, the stakeholder database is also important because here we have scientists and researchers, research funds, research centers, publishers, scholarly societies, and so on. We have diff 15 different groups of stakeholders, okay, and you can actually go there and and suggest revisions or additions. We also have a description of the stakeholder, and again, again, it's available on the wiki. And here we have categorized and uh, mapped the stakeholders according to their contribution, to the legitimacy of their claims, willingness to engage, influence, and necessity of involvement. And uh, if I go a bit further down, uh, you can see that this categoriz categorization can enable us uh, to map the stakeholders according to their importance, according to different criteria. And here I put on the vertical axis expertise and on the horizontal axis willingness to pay. And then what we did is that we mapped each of the 15 different categories of the stakeholders on this map. Why? In order to understand their importance with regards uh, to uh, the uh, open air, open access initiative. And uh, sorry about this. And by mapping the stakeholders, what can you achieve at the end of the day? When you are going to implement the questionnaires, the stakeholders questionnaire, the cost questionnaire, and the willingness to pay questionnaire, the questionnaire that will try to identify willingness to pay, you can create a sample selection method, okay, your sample of who, who uh, which stakeholders you are going to approach, that is from the population of stakeholders you're gonna select the sample, will be based on this prioritization from the stakeholders analysis. Who is important and who is not. And at the end of the day you get a map with the different stakeholders when you then translate into weights into the sample selection a method. And then once you selected a representative sample of the population of interest, which is based on these weights, you are going 
uh, to implement the two questionnaires. The first questionnaire is trying to identify the explicit cost of, uh, of this infrastructure, repository annual cost, coordination and national open access desk annual cost, cost of infra infrastructure services. And these are the main categories. And if you go to the questionnaire, these are electronic-based questionnaires, you can see that the questionnaire allows you to differentiate between investment costs and running and maintenance costs, which are important for economic analysis and cost-benefit analysis. And this is the cost questionnaire. And I would ask, uh, we will uh, contact you uh, if you are in the sample that we selected and ask you to respond to this questionnaire. The first feedback that we have is that um, this questionnaire is, uh, is doable, first of all, where people can respond to it. The, the people who are managing these infrastructures can respond to it. And if you see at the end of the day, we say, please indicate how you expect to finance the above cost. So we get an initial reaction with regards to where the revenues are coming from. And these are reactions from the people who now are managing uh, repositories. Okay, revenue from posting articles, um, access to articles, subscriptions, and so on. And then, from the cost questionnaire, we go to uh, the uh, stakeholders questionnaire which is a bigger, sorry about uh, driving you back and forth, but I want you to have a glimpse of the stakeholders questionnaire as well. Uh, so let me show you part of the stakeholders questionnaire. So first, we introduce open, uh, open air initiative to the stakeholders because this will go to people that are not familiar with open air. Uh, and we tell them uh, uh, a short introduction. We give them a short introduction to the aims of scope and so on. And then we start asking questions, how, we, how familiar you are with this initiative, and uh, then, uh, in order to try to understand the, um, uh, the connection of the stakeholder with uh, the open access uh, initiative, and then uh, we ask um, the categories whether it's a university, a library, an open access, and so on. And then we ask questions about uh, how does open air support your organization? And uh, what is the service policy gap that open air can fill? How do you see yourself contributing to open air? And in general, all these are questions in order to give us a first view which we can analyze statistically on the uh, value, on, on, the, on, on the use of open air uh, from the different uh, stakeholders. So this will allow us a first mapping of the stakeholders' preferences, priorities, benefits, servi important services, uh, and what they, they think about the financing of this infrastructure. And once we have the results from the implementation of this questionnaire, we will, uh, uh, analyze, we will, okay, let me put the slideshow here. Once we have the stakeholders questionnaire, we will be ready to put together the willingness to pay questionnaire. We will be ready to evaluate, to estimate how much the different stakeholders value 
in monetary terms the services they derive from the existence of open air. It has not been done in the literature before. Uh, and we are going to do this using a state-of-the-art methodology that is called a uh, choice experiment. And the choice experiment is a survey-based questionnaire that allows you to analyze the preferences of stakeholders. It allows you uh, to extract the total economic value different stakeholders are tribute to different services or goods. And the way you do that, and the total economic value includes use values and non-use values. And non-use values might be positive externalities from having open access to scientific results that are not going to come today, but they, are coming, they will come into the future, but uh, they are valued by the society of the relevant stakeholders today. So there are many values that are involved in sustaining these infrastructures. And unless we are able to identify them and measure them, we will not be able to strongly, um, uh, strongly support the significance and even current subsidization from governments and the European Union of these infrastructures. And uh, this uh, choice experiment methodology actually uh, uses some mathematical algorithms uh, to present the, the, um, uh, the person you are implementing the, co uh, the questionnaire to the respondent with different levels and quality of the different services that will be identified from the stakeholders questionnaire. So if you, from the stakeholders questionnaire, if you identify five very important services that stakeholders use from open air infrastructure, then you can present different cards to the stakeholder, to the respondent, with different levels of quality and quantity of these services and then use a price vehicle and asking to choose which combination of services and price they uh, prefer. And in this way, you can value not just open air infrastructure as a whole, but you can put a value on the different services and in, on the different levels and quality of services. So the choice experiment has been used extensively and has been used to back up cases in courts for valuing public goods, valuing in monetary terms public goods. And nowadays it's within the European guidelines of cost-benefit analysis, you explicit, it explicitly says that you need to use valuation methods in order to support <coughs> any subsidization of public infrastructures of public goods that are not currently sustainable, but they produce important socioeconomic benefits. In most, for example, environmental direct leaves, you get exceptions uh, and extensions for implementing the directive by uh, presenting results from these valuation studies that uh, give you a positive cost-benefit analysis. So if the cost-benefit analysis is positive, then economically you should sustain this infrastructure, you should sustain this public good. But it might be the case that you cannot really financially <coughs> currently be able to sustain it without subsidization. So there's where the government comes in and says, this has important social benefits for this community, so I will subsidize it because it sustains these benefits. Um, at the moment, what state are we at? Well, 
we um, uh, uh, completed uh, the methodology, we've uh, completed the stakeholders questionnaire, we completed the cost questionnaire, we completed the uh, prioritization of stakeholders and completed the sample selection methodology. The next week we are going to start with the implementation of the different questionnaires the analysis of data, and by February we will be ready to put together the valuation questionnaire, the choice experiment that will give us the monetary benefits. And uh, hopefully uh, April we'll have the econometric analysis, have the benefits, already have the cost from the implementation of the cost questionnaire, and be able to do the cost-benefit analysis. And once you do the cost-benefit analysis, you are able to identify uh, the, the financial model, the sustainability model that can support uh, your infrastructure or different versions of the infrastructure. So financial sustainability means that we have enough cash to cover the annual project costs without running the risk of recurring cash shortages. It's, it's very easy, it's very common sense. And we have to build, to, uh, we have to build this sustainability, uh, we have to build the model, given the cash flow of operating costs, the time profile of the interest payment, low reimbursements, taxes paid, which are relevant to a project, and also the sources of financing, financing the investment cost. So based on this cost that we will identify through the cost questionnaire, we need to compare this with what I call are the revenues, which are the revenue cash flows of the project, and, and try to see if we can have financial sustainability uh, for a long uh, time horizon. If not, then we need to find additional economic tools that will guarantee this sustainability, as long as we can prove that the cost-benefit analysis is positive. And here you can see a, a project which is uh, financially sustainable with total inflows and total outflows where you have a positive accumulated cash flows and here an unsustainable one where the accumulated cash flows are not. So it's easy to distinguish between uh, the two. And uh, at the end of the day, we will come up with a, a model that is consistent with the willingness to pay and is sufficient to ensure financial performance. And I, I, I should leave it at that. There are different business models, but unless we go through the procedure that I've showed you today, you cannot suggest, you cannot recommend any of this because you don't know the basic cost and benefits that really uh, one derives from this. I think I've used all my time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.